Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and today I'm talking about surprising reads for 2021. So I know you're like, you've done best and worst and okay, but this is different though. So when I say surprising, I just went into it like, oh, I'll give it a try. And some of these I actually was like probably gonna hate this and some I just really didn't have any expectations and really ended up enjoying it but they still weren't best of the year. Anyway, let's just talk about it. They're not ranked. I'm just going to go in order. I don't know how many I have. Maybe it's 10, maybe it's not. First I have Iron Widow by Zero J Zhao. I apologize if I'm saying that incorrectly. This is surprising because I have not been having good luck with young adult books recently and I really enjoyed this. This is young adult sci-fi, um, Chinese inspired science fiction that in my mind I see Transformers and or Power Rangers but basically people like get in them and they're like these big fighters but women are basically used as in the book they're called concubines and like the men are the fighters and they're like sucking their energy from the women and they eventually they eventually die and their main character is becoming one to seek revenge for her sister and it is a trip it is it's great there are some graphic moments um talks about feet binding so beware um there is some polyamory although i think the relationship part definitely felt more ya it could have been more developed but a lot of the fighting and the choices the main character makes she's definitely not a likable one but i liked her because i was like that's right be a baddie and it it just gave me what people on twitter were claiming was supposed to give and so finally because twitter be lying and be setting me up and raising my expectations and finally this lived like it wasn't a five star for me but i gave it four it was still really enjoyable in that ending i cannot wait for the next one so very excited the author seems like a delight love all the fan art um shared on twitter and so i was pleasantly surprised by this one then I have The Good Son. I read this very early in the year. I think this is Korean. It was translated to English, obviously. And it was a thriller that thrilled me, okay? That is hard to do. I don't know if I've, I don't even feel like I've read, I have read a fair amount. I feel like they're just not great often. They're very slow and boring or obvious or just like redonkulous. This was good. This starts out with our main character waking up covered in blood, but he don't know why. And so it goes, it like has two timelines where it's like him in the present trying to figure out what the fuck, but then also him like slowly getting his memory back. So you're seeing the previous whenever leading up to how he is like this. And that's all I'm gonna say. I was like, stressed from the first chapter and I thought I saw where something was going because you obviously start the story and you're like okay this seems pretty obvious but it's like no 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 maybe it's I was like okay I know it's and then it was a thrill an excellent thrill I felt this I felt worried and I I, I don't know I felt I had like ugh, chills and like anticipation and anxiousness I don't even know it was thrilling and that's what i want for my thrillers is this and so you should read it and i definitely want to read more like translated i've heard good things about like just um asian authors that are like having their works translated into english writing in thriller and horror in general like i have a lot of books um, by japanese authors that are on my list that i've heard are really good because <sighs> i don't know these americans just sometimes but not always and then okay the pillars of the earth by ken follett okay okay last year i think i made a video about like books i was intimidated or series i was intimidated to get into this was on the list this is a trilogy but also now has a prequel but they're all like a thousand pages like they're chunky books and i was like and I have read more historical fiction in the past. I haven't recently, so I've always been interested in it. And I often see it at like Costco on their big book table. And I was, I don't know, I didn't know anything about it, but I was like, it's a big old chunky book, but I was like, it could be really dry. So I got a used copy and with a friend, Naomi, we bike read it together and were we surprised? Oh my gosh. It is like, I don't even know what year. It's old. It's like set during old, old time like old 
I don't know, 11 something, the 1100s, 1200s. I don't know what century. But the mess, it is so dramatic. Okay, monks, but make them messy and petty. Yes, messy, petty ass monks. You've got like royalty who are fucked up and shady. You've got normal people and like peasant people. There's mess, the drama. All around, this is all surrounding, the story is around building like a cathedral. And does that sound dull to you? It does, doesn't it? But it's not. That shit was wild. I was like, who knew there could be this much drama? It was like, as the world turns, old edition. And I listened to the audio, highly recommend. I need to read the next one. Um, wow, so good. <laughs> The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. Who did I, was it just Mara? I feel like I've only seen like one or two people talk about this book. And I didn't know much about it going into it. And so I borrowed it from the library. And I remember reading it like, 75% of it, I was like, <laughs> like things were happening, but I was like, what? <laughs> it is one of the most unique, off the wall, bonkers things I've ever read. And I mean that in a good way. Like, I just was like, we, who? Violence, gods walking amongst us, dogs. It, <laughs> it is absolutely ridiculous, but I really liked it. It's like these children, and they all have special abilities and they have, their, they keep referencing this man they call father, who also sounds like a god or god. And they do a lot of fucked up shit when they're looking for father. And other people get tied up in this story and a lot of fucked up shit happens, a lot. And then more and more. And then you're like, at like the 60% mark, maybe you're like, ah, oh, I see what's going on here. And then more fucked up shit keeps happening. And you get to the end and you're like, I need to read that again. It, that's, a, that's all I can give you. It's a trip. Never read anything like it. It is wild. It may be worth your while. I'm just saying. Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. I almost thought to put this on my best of list. It didn't quite make it there. So I read Grown first by Tiffany D. Jackson last year, which a lot of people loved. I didn't love. It was fine. It was too close to the R. Kelly story for me. But anyway, I had heard good things about Monday's Not Coming. So I read it and it broke me. It was so sad. It was so heartbreaking. I loved how it was written. I loved the suspense that it built. Um, I felt so attached to the main character and I felt her pain and her like the worry she had for her friend. I thought it was a really unique way to tell a story about friendship and showing how important friendship is and that you see a lot in stories and just in real life people talking about like romantic breakups but like friendship breakups or you know if a friend just leaves or ghosts you I guess and I just felt all of her emotions and more and um it was so sad but the pacing the way it was written I thought was excellent and um it just is weird because I didn't love grown I love this and then I didn't like white smoke so I don't know. I may read allegedly, I may not, but Monday's not coming. Be careful because feelings and some heavy topics. So maybe look up content warnings, um, lots of abuse, but it was, it was a, it was a great story. Is my battery gonna die? Back, I finally got backup batteries for Christmas. Woohoo! Okay, so next one I have, which could technically go in my romance video, but I'm gonna put it here as well. And that is Shelter in Place by Nora Roberts. So earlier this year I did an experiment reading Nora Roberts for the first time. I read three 
books in that vlog and I read this one which was my favorite then I read another one which I liked but I didn't love as much as this one and then I read another one where I didn't it so shelter in place I don't know what it was about it I think the setting is Maine and for the most part we're on like this little island off of Maine and they live by the water and like the main character and her grandmother and I loved her grandmother and her relationship with her grandmother and the love interest was actually sweet and not a d-bag <laughs> like some of the other uh love interests in the other Nora Roberts books I've read and uh, the setting just like I don't know I I don't I've been to Maine but I have never lived in Maine but it just felt cozy it felt like it's categorized I think as a romantic suspense but it almost felt like I guess it's not a cozy mystery but something about it felt comforting just like the descriptions of the island and, and the view from the window and the what do you call that thing the lighthouse and I think she was like was she a painter or like a sculptor the way when she did her art and her grandma was kind of all like this free spirit and I just loved her energy and the way she like would joke and flirt with the main character's love interest but you know in the grand it just warmed my heart my it just warmed my heart I don't know where that came from and I mean the suspense story was there too right like they are both survivors of a mass shooting like in a mall and I think this was years ago I don't know how many years and now it's later he's a cop she is like doing her art or whatever and she has kind of a a rocky relationship with her family outside of her grandmother so that part like it was interesting too but the everything else just the regular living the, the, the build of the relationship the everyday things I just loved so much and I want to buy it and reread it and see if it still feels so cozy. Mm. What a delight. Thank you, Nora. Now this one, hear me out. The Southern Guides, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. Now I did do a video talking about this. It's not a five star for me. It's like a three and a half, but it still was surprising in many ways. Surprising on how fast I read it like it's so readable like you just read and you're like I've already read 200 pages and I really don't know what happened it just the way he writes is so easy to read so easy and then I'm surprised I'm like where the direction this took like I don't know what I thought about it going in or what I thought it was I just wasn't expecting it to be what it was and that's both good and bad like there were some things and I discussed this in the video I'll link it if you are, are interested um there's just some things in the book that I just don't I didn't know how to put my finger on what was bothering me about the way he handled it and some things I was like oh I don't know if that was the best way to do that and then some other things I thought were great ways to talk about certain things or like certain ways to handle the conversation and other moments were genuinely horrifying and terrifying rats roaches I'm not gonna relive that so it just surprised me in a lot of ways I think it's a really unique story unique way to tell the story and talk about the issues that he does it's a very interesting mixture of like I don't know what this was categorized if it's like thriller or horror I feel like it's like horror I feel like it's horror. Is it horror and even from the title I still was like what the hell is this gonna be and I didn't expect what that was gonna be or I don't know there were just a lot of surprises there was lots of positives meh, things about it I still like <laughs> Even after that discussion, after filming that video, watching other people's reviews, reading the comments, I still have this like, ah, it's so odd. I don't know. I don't know. I know a lot of people love it. I can see why from, yes, 
<laughs> See, I just feel, anyway, I was surprised, okay? I was surprised, I read it really fast. I was happy, pleasantly surprised it was taking place in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, which is outside of Charleston. So some things felt really familiar, even if it takes place in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and then some choices I just didn't love, but I, I, I feel like I knew what he was attempting. And uh, yeah, I don't have, I don't, okay. Okay, I was surprised. <laughs> they Never Learned by Lane Fargo is another thriller that actually gave me what I wanted. I think it's hard for a thriller or a mystery to get five stars from me, but this got four, which is like amazing because it actually, I need thrillers to be to the point. Like don't be, no thriller should be 500 pages. Like I need to be short and to the point. I need short chapters. I need it to be engaging. And this was that short chapters. It was, I don't know, maybe 300 is pa 300 ish page. 300 ish pages. We had two uh, POVs and I always find it interesting when it's done well when there are two or more POVs and you find out how they eventually how they connect loved figuring that out and even if I can like guess or have an idea of something that somewhere is going and as long as getting there is still like exciting and like makes sense and like not isn't like so ridiculously obvious I still can enjoy myself and that happened with this and essentially it's women taking care of trifling ass men you know what I'm saying like I mean I wouldn't do it in real life but in a book sometimes violence is the answer and that's all I got to say is people in this book were choosing violence and I was like hey I understand anyway I was thrilled reading it so that's all I asked for in a thriller and it delivered this one might be weird but Leviathan Waits by James S.A. Corey. And I say it might be weird because in my video like mid-year I talked about all the books I had DNF'd so far and this was in it. And I didn't DNF it because I was hating it. I just was like, oh, hmm, it's fine. But I wanted to watch the show so I just DNF'd it like halfway through. But I got to like season three. I don't even know if I got halfway. I got to like whatever episode my friend told me was the end of the third book and I was like, damn it. I'm loving this show. Now I kind of want to go back and read the books. And so I paused my watch of the TV show as hard as that was. Because I think about The Expanse all the time. Like I feel like it's becoming one of my favorite shows. And I told my friend Kara, I was like, is it weird? The Expanse is feeling like a comfort watch. Not like it's slow. There's always shit happening. But I feel like, I don't know, the characters, the actors are so good. They feel like real people. And I feel like I'm hunkering, I'm bunkering, hunkering, bunkering, bunking down. Do not know the word with the crew when I watch The Expanse. And by the way, I recorded a video with my friend Kara who um, about the book Leviathan Wakes versus the first season and then like a few episodes into season two that cover the first book. So that'll be going up at some point. <laughs> um, but yeah, I and then rereading it, I enjoyed it way more. And I think after having seen the show, seeing characters and events happen, then reading it, I could like it put it together better. And in that video, we talk about things we like in the show versus the book. So I won't go into it too much here. But um, yeah, so I'm going to continue <laughs> reading them. And it's so weird, because I feel like the first season does stick pretty well to the books, but still, it didn't feel like boring or repetitive to read it even after having watched the show. So <sighs> very surprised but very happy though. I just want like, I got the floppy paperback in the first one and I want them to put out a box set of all of the paperbacks because now the ninth book is out, but I think it came out in the hardcover. I want a floppy paperback, even though I'm not at the ninth book, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Okay, last one on this list is The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. I know, I know. I gave it, I, th I gave it like a three and a half, but I round up to four on Goodreads. And this is surprising because honestly, I thought I was gonna hate it. I had owned that book for years, hadn't read it, finally did like a Nigel Chooses My TBR video and he chose Eye of the World and I was dreading it because 
I just was like, I'm not gonna like this. And I actually did. I like the book. Um, it's not perfect. It's not five stars. It is too long. My complaint about I've read three so far, they're all too long. There are things he really spends time on. We're like, okay, Robbo, we can move on from here. Um, and it's not like some wildly original story because you know, I've read a lot of white man fantasy by now. But I still at my core, I like I love fantasy stories, right. And so the setup in the eye of the world, even though it's like, I don't know, I feel like overall, I think this might be an unpopular opinion from the first three I've read the eye of the world has been my favorite. Um, I was just intrigued enough about the premise and the prophecy and the lore of the world that we get in the first one, even if the ending is not that great, that I was like, interested in continuing and so didn't love the second one the third one was good um and I've been kind of like oh, should I continue I made a video about that too so I am gonna read the fourth one probably this I don't know when you're gonna see this video in January um and a lot of people said that is like kind of like a make or break like a lot of people love that and then they continue and then if you don't like not continue so we'll see but I was pleasantly surprised that I actually did enjoy the eye of the world um the audiobooks are great so yeah had a lot of reads this year a lot that I just had a lot of reads this year obviously had my amazing that's my best and I had terrible my worst but I had a lot in the middle you know some surprising some disappointing some good um reads and I'm going to try to be better about selecting what I read next year so hopefully I have even more just amazing reads next year um but yeah I don't know did you have any reads that you were like uh kind of iffy about and then they like blew you away and were amazing or maybe you were gonna hate read something but then you actually loved it <laughs> it happens it's fine we're humans so anyway um i'll list all these books in the description below thank you so much for watching please give this video a thumbs up subscribe i hope you stay blessed hydrated moisturized and sunscreen and i'll see you in my next one bye